Let's talk about the new long leg update to the website. And we already did part one of it where we discussed the website prior to yesterday's update. And now we're going to talk about this new update. And there's going to be a part three because there's another update on July 1st. Super excited to get into this. And this has become a conspiracy long legs channel, honestly. Uh, go check out all of the videos we've been talking about long legs for the longest now. And we are definitely excited to get more into the symbols and all of that. That video probably will come out till next week. Maybe I'll wait until the website fully updates and then we'll get into deciphering all of the codes as well as some of the downloadable stuff that is available on the website which we have been looking into and also trying to come up with some theories and looking around the webs to find out what exactly all of these codes are and it's been a group effort which I really like there's a lot of people online who have been helpful adding hints and tips and all of that so definitely excited to dive deep into this before we get into the website and the newest uh, things that have been updated to it I want to ask you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button we are on the road to 35,000 subscriber that's our next big goal we are less than 5,000 away super excited to get to that so make sure you subscribe tons of giveaways all summer and videos so let's get into the long legs website so this is the birthday murders website and if you go to it you will see that there are different cases here all committed by the murderer long leg who of course is being played by nicholas cage so we last left off talking about some of these murders that happened and now two more have been added this is the angstrom family which we see right here now by the way i will be using code words in here and there because last time i said everything on this website and talked about some things without blurring all of that you two wanted to be funny and age restrict the video and all that so we're going to be using code words i'm sorry so Warren and Vivian Angstrom had been together for nearly 10 years. Warren, a notary public at the Salem Municipal Courthouse, met Vivian while bowling at Shenanigans Lanes in West Staten. They soon married and settled in the town of Elkhorn. The couple loved to go fishing in the Yamhill River every spring. Polly, their only child, was a nine-year-old who attended Lonnie Elam Elementary School, where she was awarded Student of the Month shortly before she was brutally murdered. That is an insane sentence to read. I haven't read these, so I didn't even know that was coming. Really really, really just went straight to it, right? So it says the little girl had been stabbed over 40 times with a 12 inch chef's knife. Her face was sliced off with a vegetable peeler post mortem. Vivian 34 was found in a pool of blood with a boning knife protruding from her stomach. Warren 38 had gouged out both his eyes with a screwdriver before slitting his own wrist. Man, the murder's uh, description, everything, this go around for the website just got really brutal and dark, honestly. Did not expect all of that. Deputies responded early on November 17th 17th, 1972 after receiving a call from a traveling salesman who had knocked on the door to the Angstrom's family residence on Baylock Street. Police Lieutenant Travis Hobson was quoted as saying, I never believed that Warren Angstrom was responsible, but with all the evidence pointing to the contrary, the case was ruled. I'm not going to say that one because you too, but you know, someone or something made him do it. Hobson added, he didn't do all of that on his own accord. Warren was described by all who knew him as a naturally family man. Yet what became of his family was anything but natural. And we get some crime scene photos. I'll try to show as much as I can here. But YouTube is just not really complying with these things. It's a movie, y'all. It's a movie. But YouTube doesn't understand that sometimes. The interior walls of the house were decorated with a series of inverted triangles. A copy of the book, The Golden Bow, A Study in Magic and Religion by Scottish anthropologist Sir James George Fraser was found on a bedside table turned to page 187. On the refrigerator, a birthday card was inscribed with coded message. The card was signed, Long Legs. And we see a little note that was left here. We're doing a deep dive into deciphering these codes next week. I just want to get all of them together before I do it. I was planning to do it last week, but then I thought I should wait to get all of them and just do a whole video on it instead of giving you a ton of other videos that instead of making like 10 videos, is just about that so that will come out next week when we probably get all of it neighbors recalled seeing a yellow moving van circling the block in the days leading up to the killings i saw it one night after the johnny carson cling neighbor ida cast i remember thinking who in the heck moves furniture in the middle of the night if this vicious crime was indeed part of the long legs murder it would have been the sixth set of killings perpetrated by the killer. Years later, when the case was reopened, the Federal Bureau of Investigation noted that the crime may have had a special significance for the murderer, as six is the number of the devil. So definitely going to keep the Angstrom's murder high up on the list as something where maybe long legs changed. And one thing to note too is this took place 1972. And when you go and open some of these files, you see that some of these new photo crime scenes that you see are dated for 1992. So 20 years after the murder, it looks like this is when the movie movies taking place after the sixth murder. So we're going to get back to the Golden Bow, which is the book that was found after we read the final murder. The Hemlock Police Department in 
announced the bodies of four people were found on the evening of August 19, 1974 in an apparent murder. Jasper Weir, 36, a system administrator with the firm of Beckwith and Holloran, is suspecting of killing his wife, Ethel, 32, and their two daughters, Veronica and Rosemary, before taking his own life. Ethel, who worked as an office coordinator with Seward and Sons, was found in the bathroom. The bodies of the girl, Veronica, and Rosemary were found in the living room. The girls were said to be straight-A students at, Ma at Mapathurd Street School. Family members recalled that Veronica wanted to be an astronaut when she grew up, while Rosemary had hoped to be a keeper at the Cape Disappointment Lighthouse in nearby Washington State. Family enjoyed swimming and recreational activities at Hag Lake. Hemlock Child Protective Services was called to pay a visit to the Weir House after the girls had missed several days of school. HCPS in turn alerted law enforcement. After collecting evidence, the Tillamook County Medical Examiner's Office determined that Ethel and her daughter died from the profuse loss of blood due to multiple knife wounds. Forensic pathologist Dr. Dominic Waldron was quoted as saying, the mother was stabbed exactly 66 times. Hemlock Police Captain Cody Hammond described the killings as hellacious. He noted that the murders were clearly the work of a twisted mind. Similar to the Armstrong family, a copy of the Golden Bow was found on Jasper's bedside table. Turn, turn specifically on page 226. So I'm going to read this page after. The white two-story house in Grimaldi Way would never look the same way again. The Mount Gogotha neighborhood was described as reeling after the murders were discovered. Many neighbors claim to have seen an elderly woman in front of the Weir house in the days prior. I think that's going to be long legs. Others would swear that Jasper Weir would never do something like this, according to the neighbor Muriel Fogarty. Jasper was not a violent man and added, I never saw any signs of abuse. Jasper may not have been violent, but that August night, he behaved like a psychotic lunatic. His wife and daughters had to be buried with closed caskets due to the amount of savagery involved. Hammond described the murders as ritualistic. As with the previous killings, a note was discovered on the refrigerator signed by someone or something calling himself Longlegs. The cipher is there as well. Hammond characterized the letter as eerie and claimed we even contacted a cryptographer to try and decipher the thing. As each of Longlegs' killings took place in a different county, there was no communication or cooperation between the various authorities. And no one made a connection until years later when the FBI reviewed the cases. More murders. At this point, the trail turns cold, as Longlegs appears to have vanished for more than a decade. No more murders, no more letters, no more seemingly demented family sides for over, for over 10 long years. What started out as a series of unrelated murder is now looking increasingly like the work of a mysterious and unhinged serial killer. In the next entry of this weblog, we'll learn whether or not Long Legs continues to kill, and it says to tune back on July 1st. It has some download stuff as well to check out, which I had checked out. And like I said, one of the main things to uh, take away from those is that the new uh, pictures are dated 1992 which is 20 years after the murder in 1972 which was the sixth killing which apparently they're saying was a big one for long legs since they are so into the satanism and all of that so let's get into the copy of this book which is the golden bow which the golden bow is actually a real book which you can actually read so the golden bow is says a study in comparative religion and it was also called a study in magic and religion it says it it is a wide-ranging comparative study of mythology and religion written by Scottish anthropologist Sir James George Fraser. And apparently this book dealt with a lot of the shared elements of religious belief, scientific thought, which discussed human sacrifice, the dying gods, scapegoat, as well as fertility right. And so the thesis behind James George Fraser's book, The Golden Bow, was that most ancient religions were fertility cults that revolved around the worship and periodic sacrifice of a sacred king in accordance to the cycle with the seasons. And this was a whole thing that he wrote about that says the understanding of the natural world would progress from magic through religious beliefs to the scientific thought. So that makes it very interesting here because we're seeing all of these murders and all of that is being committed. And in a way, it's like long legs things. These are like the sacrifices that he is making. And so let's read this page here that comes from the book that was left at one of these crime scenes. Therefore, the Brahms are our gods. This radical conflict of principle between magic and religion sufficiently explains the relentless hostility with which in history the priest has often pursued the magician. The haughty self-sufficiency of the magician, his arrogant demeanor towards the higher powers, and his and his unabashed claims to exercise a sway like theirs could not but revolt the priest, to whom would his awful sense of the divine majesty and his humble prostration in the presence of it, such claims and such demeanor must have appeared. An impious and blasphemous assertion of prerogatives that belong to God alone. 
and sometimes we may suspect lower motives concur to wet the edge of the priest's hostility. He professed to be the proper medium, the true intercessor between God and man, and no doubt his interests as well as his feelings were often injured by a rival practitioner who preached a surer and smoother road to fortune than the rugged and slippery path of divine favor. Yet this antagonism, familiar as it is to us, seems to have made its appearance comparatively late in the history of religion. At an earlier stage, the functions of priests and sorcerers were often combined or, to speak perhaps more correctly, were not yet differentiated from each other. To serve his purpose, man wooed the good will of gods or spirits by prayer and sacrifice, while at the same time he had recourse to ceremonies and forms of words which he hoped would of themselves bring out the desired result without the help of God or devil. In short, he performed religious and magic rites simultaneously. So I think that what we're really getting to here is that this is, without a doubt, there is something supernatural going on in long legs for sure. Because one of the things that we have to note with all of the uh, crimes that are happening here is that the murderer long legs isn't the one committing these from the trailer alone. What we see is that there is something supernatural going on here. And many people have also pointed out that this book also talks about sometimes there are these spells and things that are passed on. And even here it talks about the mantras and things that take hold of one. One of the things and theories that we've talked about already as well and something that Nicolas Cage also dive deep to into a th it, in an interview they did years ago about the character is that this is like an evil Geppetto and apparently these puppets that they're making that they're giving to these families we still don't know exactly how they're being given are in it's like these puppets themselves possess some evil spirit within them or this evil energy and that's exactly what makes these families turn specifically the father figure in all these families which is the one that's always committing the crime and so we see that these are always given we don't know just yet how or why the family would take these in but we do see throughout the trailer that they seem to have a focus on the children here and one of the things that we have seen from all of these crimes and all of these things have been logged on the website it's that these crimes always deal with a girl they always are revolving around a girl the only character that has ever survived this however is Kieran and Shipka's character it seems that they were the only ones that were able to make it out alive why specifically I don't know but it looks like we're getting to the present time when the movie's taking place so I feel like we're going to learn more about Kieran and Shipka's character and why they were able to survive this whole ordeal with long legs or why they were the only ones that they chose to keep alive because something that they note in the teaser is Kieran and Shipka's character is talking about the time that she was with long legs and she says that she's never going to forget him it's something that she doesn't want to forget actually is what she says and it's a place that's not here or there either so it's like they were under some control or some spell where they were like pretty much detached from reality they also talk about wandering souls in this book as well that's also a thing that makes you wonder what is long legs and goal with all of this are they trying to pass a soul into the doll and why exactly that would be the case a thing about Micah Morrell's character Lee Harker also is that they come from a very religious background their mother is still overbearing them with religion and we see that they actually are sort of detached from that now that they grew up the big question is why are Lee and long legs so attached and as long legs says also and this sort of has him be re-inspired again and to come out as well there's a lot of shots that are parallel as well between lee and long legs so i'm pretty sure in the next entry to the website we're going to get more of those clues but the whole thing with the golden bow being a book that long legs is really into makes me think that he has some detachment from religion as well from his past something traumatic some abuse or something that may have occurred that caused him to become as it says here the magician and the priest is now sort of looking down on that but the magician is long legs of course because they are doing these spells these rituals it hasn't really gone into detail about what exactly this ritual or spell that long legs is trying to accomplish here but the fact that these dolls are made and the fact that the targets are always girls there could be something that may have happened in their past or that they're longing for a daughter of sorts i don't know it's interesting um, things it's sick it's dark and just insane honestly I, I i don't know we're at a loss here but we're definitely deciphering as much as we can from everything we've seen already i will be talking about the downloadable files as well making a whole video for that as well as the long legs code and those videos will come on next week once we get the next entry into the website 
So stay tuned for that. But the website, the lore, the marketing for this has just gotten so good, so insane. It is definitely something I'm interested in talking a lot more. So if you're interested in that, make sure you're subscribed and hitting that notification bell to know when the next video drops. But yeah, we're going to be looking more into this Golden Bow book because I think it's going to be something that's going to appear more as well. And the question is, why did long legs go cold for that long, right? Like did they finally achieve something and then something happened that made them want to come back because all of the other other crimes have been back to back it seemed and I think that it's especially telling that there is some talk about nine all right throughout the whole teaser and trailers as well and right now we're on the seventh murder so we definitely are curious to know is the ninth one Lee Harker or is it Kieran Shipka's character of because I think that this is something that we're definitely seeing was Lee the one that got away was Kiernan not the right one we're gonna definitely find out in the next I think installment and we're two weeks away from Long Legs super excited to check it out I think we're gonna go insane <laughs> with the videos once it comes out because I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be a movie that's gonna be clean cut and give you all the answers right away you might have to check it out a couple of times but Neon hit me up let me watch this movie already, y'all. But anyways, uh, let's talk about this on another video, which we'll talk about next week once we get the update to the website. In the meantime, if you haven't checked out our other videos on long legs, really would appreciate you checking that out. We got a ton of other videos as well. We've been talking about Nosferatu, Maxine. It's horror summer really right now, but we got some other uh, movies we we're going to talk about pretty soon. So if horror is not just your thing, we don't just do horror. We do a ton of other things. Go check us out. Really would appreciate our website, www.culturelixer.com as well as our Instagram, our TikTok, our Twitter, running a giveaway for a Dexter's Laboratory Complete Edition. So go check that out right now on Instagram at The Culture Elixir. And as always, that is going to do it for me. Drop your theories, drop your thoughts on the website as well below. We just wanted to discuss these two new cases I got added, which give us a little bit more insight as to how this murderer operates, especially with the Golden Bow book. That's going to be important, I feel. So make sure you continue watching us. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell for all things long legs. We'll be discussing it here more. But anyways, as always, I'll see you next time. Stay safe. Stay positive.